Hello and welcome to the Weather and Climate Lab number 2. In this lab, you are going to learn about the ozone layer and also about the biggest and the most successful international agreement in history. Do you know its name? I'm talking about the Montreal Protocol. It was adopted in 1987 and since then it was signed by 197 countries. It is the only universal United Nations agreement signed by all the countries of the world. So what so important happened in 1980s that inspired all the world leaders, despite all their differences, to sign that one agreement? Surprisingly, that decisive reason was a scientific discovery. Discovery of the ozone hole. In May 1985, Three scientists from British Antarctic Survey published a paper in Nature telling about the large losses of total ozone in the Antarctic region. They also identified the possible cause of that loss – man-made chemicals, chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. Later, NASA scientists analyzed their satellite dataset and confirmed that the ozone layer was depleting. A scientific consensus was so powerful that it was enough to convince all the countries and the Montreal Protocol was enacted in 1989. The goal of that agreement is to reduce the amount of ozone-depleting substances, to save the ozone layer and in long-term perspective to recover it. You may ask me what is so important with that ozone that everybody cared about it. To understand that better, we need to take a look at the structure of the atmosphere and solar radiation. The atmosphere consists of gases, droplets and particulates, and it is divided into layers based on change in temperature, pressure and composition as we go up in altitude. In this lab, we focus on stratosphere because that layer has the highest concentration of ozone compared to the other layers. Ozone is a unique form of oxygen that is made up of three oxygen atoms. The ozone layer is so important because ozone has the ability to absorb ultraviolet solar radiation. And that ultraviolet radiation is harmful for all living beings on Earth. Without the ozone layer protection, life on Earth would be impossible. You will learn more about ozone layer in this lab. And now let me walk you through your lab and tell you about some tools you need to use. In the section number three of your lab, you need to open Google Earth document. To do that, you need to have Google Earth installed on your computer. Search Google Earth find Google Earth website and download Earth Pro on desktop. Once you have your Google Earth installed, it looks like this cool 3D map. Now you can open the file from your lab. So now you can see the ozone concentrations layer on top of the globe. You can estimate the amount of ozone based on the color and you can also change the time scale. To find different concentrations of the ozone in time, you can use this time cursor. You can move it manually like this or you can use the animation button. If this animation is too fast for you, you can change the speed of animation. Go to your tools change animation speed and make it slower. Put the cursor back at the beginning of the time scale and push animation button. As you see now it's much slower and easier to see the level of ozone. I want you to pay attention to this moment. You see a big black area. Remember this black area doesn't mean zero ozone. This black area means no data. So please use only the colors provided to you by this scale and ignore the black area. 
I believe now you have all the tools to complete your lab, but if you still have any questions, ask your lab instructor. By the end of this lab, you have to find the answers for three questions. What is the relationship between solar radiation and the stratospheric ozone concentrations? How and why has stratospheric ozone changed over time? And what changes can we expect in the future? I wish you an exciting scientific journey. See you next lab.